This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. Randomness is a strange concept that defies intuition. Seemingly random actions, such as a series of coin flips, can produce long sequences of heads or tails that perceptually lack randomness, while a clearly patterned series of numbers, such as a digit series of normal numbers, would pass many tests of randomness. Conceptually, randomness can be theoretically assumed, but in practice, it can only truly be inferred indirectly from properties of a generated output through various statistical tests that attempt to quantify it. Randomness is an unobservable property of a generating process. Beyond the theoretical, the applications of randomness spans a broad range of fields. In its more classic manifestations, it can be found in art, music, and literature, as well as gaming and gambling. It also plays a critical role in the statistics of science. But within the past few decades, it has by far seen its largest practical application in securing modern communications. Humanity's first exploration of randomness began with gaming. All major ancient civilizations engaged in games of chance, initially using dice. Evidence of such games existed as far back as 2100 BC among ancient Egypt, India, and China. The Chinese in particular had a long history of playing games of chance before Europeans. Around 1150 BC, the Chinese text I Ching, or Book of Changes, discussed problems related to coin tossing, exploring permutations of heads and tails. In ancient Greece, Democritus considered randomness a subjective concept arising from human inability to understand events, while Aristotle viewed chance as a genuine but minor part of the world, making the first attempts to classify randomness into events that are certain, probable, and unknowable. Epicurus further proposed the idea of inherent randomness that is woven into an atomic fabric that forms existence. By the Roman Empire, chance was personified as the goddess Fortuna, and games of chance were used to simulate her decisions. However, by the age of Christianity, the deterministic nature of Christian teachings posed challenges, with scholars like Augustine, Aquinas, and Martin Luther grappling with the concept of free will versus divine foreknowledge. Throughout history, chance has always been linked with faith and divination. Despite encountering chance for millennia, the understanding of randomness progressed slowly as grasping statistical principles from everyday experiences proved too challenging. It was not until the 16th century that Italian mathematicians began discussing outcomes of games of chance as mathematical relationships. Girolamo Carano's 1565 work, Libre de Lude Alle, provided one of the first formal analysis of the odds of winning at various games marking a milestone in the mathematical understanding of chance. By the 17th century, notable figures like Galileo, Pascal, and Fermat began exploring the concept of probability, paving the way for the formalization of probability theory. German mathematician and philosopher Gottfried Leibniz raised questions about randomness and its relationship with complexity. This concept would later be formalized in the 20th century. The first textbook on probability titled The Doctrine of Chances was published in 1718, marking the field's growth. However, despite the progress made by the mathematical community, the general public continued to rely on practices like fortune-telling. The term entropy, an idea crucial in studying randomness, was first introduced by Rudolf Clausius in 1865. This concept exposed the limitations of the existing 19th century belief that accurate knowledge of a system's initial state could predict its behavior indefinitely. This became evident especially in complex systems like celestial mechanics. By the 20th century, new interpretations of randomness challenged its perception as a minor consequential property to a fundamental phenomena of existence. With the development of information theory, this led to the entropic view of randomness being applied across a broad range of scientific fields. Over the course of history, the elusive concept of randomness has led to various interpretations aiming to quantify it. The first formalized interpretation, the mathematical theory of probability, emerged from efforts to describe chance in gambling. However, it would become a big part of studying the natural world. 
In statistical randomness, given a sample space of, for example, a sequence of numbers or events, each element in the space has an equal probability of occurring. This is known as uniform distribution. These elements must also exhibit independence of each other, meaning the occurrence of one event does not influence the occurrence of subsequent events. From these properties, a statistical random sequence inherently exhibits unpredictability, lacking a discernible pattern. Given past outcomes, one cannot reliably predict future outcomes. While this seems like a solid definition of randomness, it suffers from a major flaw, the perception of unpredictability. The digits of pi, for example, exhibit statistical randomness, yet are completely reproducible given the correct initial conditions of the sample space. The same can also be said with other statistical random events, such as a coin flip or dice. Their degree of unpredictability only exists because of the limits of available information of the event. Statistical randomness cannot guarantee true randomness or objective unpredictability. However, in practice, this pseudo-randomness is still usable for statistical purposes and other real-world applications. The scope of a statistically random sample space also determines how usable the randomness is and must be considered for practical use. With a large enough sample space that exhibits global randomness, local pockets can exist that are by themselves not statistically random. In 1938, M.G. Kendall and Bernard Babington Smith introduced the first random number tests based on the chi-square test in the Journal of the Royal Statistical Society. Developed by English mathematician Carl Pearson, the chi-square test evaluates if there's a significant relationship between two categories of information or if they are independent of each other. Kendall and Smith proposed four relationship tests the frequency test, which checked for the even distribution of single digits, the serial test that examined two-digit distribution, the poker test that tests for certain sequences of five numbers at a time based on poker hands, and the gap test, which looked at the distance between zeros. If a given sequence of numbers is able to pass all of these tests within 5% of statistical significance, it is deemed locally random by Kendall and Smith. The absurdity of trying to quantify randomness is a direct result of how probability is interpreted. Developments in the early 20th century saw the concept of probability split into two primary categories of interpretation, physical and evidential. Physical properties, which are also called objective or frequency probabilities, are derived from real-world physical systems, where a given type of event tends to occur at a persistent rate or relative frequency in a long run of trials. Statistical randomness is based on this as it attempts to evaluate these stable frequencies. Evidential probability, also called Bayesian probability, views probabilities as a measure of belief or confidence in the occurrence of an event given some prior knowledge or evidence. It updates the prior probability to obtain the posterior probability, which then serves as the basis for making decisions or drawing conclusions. During this time period, the rise of quantum mechanics also began to challenge classical determinism and introduced a level of inherent randomness and unpredictability into the behavior of particles at the quantum level. Quantum mechanics does not provide definite outcomes for individual events but rather gives probabilities of different outcomes. This probabilistic nature had profound implications for understanding the fundamental nature of reality. It made randomness an irreducible fundamental property of existence. In 1948, Claude Shannon, a mathematician and electrical engineer working at Bell Labs, published a seminal paper titled A Mathematical Theory of Communication in the Bell System Technical Journal. In this paper, Shannon introduced the concept of entropy as a measure of uncertainty and information content, formalizing the fundamental ideas behind information theory. Shannon's work provided a mathematical framework for understanding communication systems, encoding and decoding messages, error correction, and the limits of data compression. Within information theory, randomness is the opposite of predictability in a probabilistic process. If a system has zero entropy, it has no randomness and is completely predictable. As entropy increases, 
the randomness or unpredictability of the system also increases. Entropy tells us how much information is contained in a random variable or dataset. Higher entropy means more uncertainty and higher information content, while low entropy means less uncertainty and lower information content. The implication of this is that truly random data contains no information that can be predicted and represents the most amount of information possible within a system. Within the scope of probability theory, statistical randomness had one major disconnect with the real world. It avoided the definition of a random sequence, but rather described the abstract properties that it should exhibit to be truly random. In 1919, Austrian mathematician Richard von Mises introduced an interpretation of randomness that was more in line with modern practical use. He defined an infinite sequence of zeros and ones as random if it is unbiased, meaning the frequency of zeros and ones each stabilize at one half. From this, any selected subsequence is random if it maintains this unbiased property. This concept is known as algorithmic randomness. However, much like statistical randomness, von Mises only defined the characteristics of randomness, but not a proper selection rule for subsequences. Attempts to solidify a selection method led to a selection rule being developed in the mid-1960s simultaneously by mathematicians Andrei Kolomogorov, Ray Solomonov, and Gregory Chaitin, conceiving of a method for selecting a subsequence based on a notion known as Kolomogorov complexity or algorithmic complexity. It was proposed that the idea of measuring the complexity of a sequence as the length of the shortest computer program or encoding that could generate that sequence. If this program or encoding required more bits than the original sequence, it is said to be Kolomogorov random. Kolomogorov complexity effectively tests a dataset for its compressibility, with a truly random sequence of data being effectively incompressible. Kolomogorov's initial idea, however, suffered from a fatal flaw. It is uncomputable in the sense that there is no algorithmic procedure that can compute the exact Kolomogorov complexity of an arbitrary object. In 1966, Swedish mathematician Per Martin Luth would extend upon Kolmogorov's work on algorithmic randomness with his own more rigorous definition known as Martin Love's randomness or ML randomness. In Martin Love randomness, a sequence is considered random if it does not belong to any null sets. A null set is a set of sequences that can be generated by an algorithm or process. In effect, if there is no algorithm that can effectively predict or compress the sequence, it is considered Martin-Love random. As the field of computer science began to grow in the mid-20th century, randomness would quickly move from the realm of theory to application as it became a big part of scientific analysis, data analysis, simulation, and modeling. One example of this is the development of randomized algorithms. These algorithms used randomization as part of their logic to solve computational problems. Unlike deterministic algorithms, which produce the same output for a given input every time they run, randomized algorithms introduce an element of randomness to achieve certain advantages such as simplicity, efficiency, or improved performance in terms of time or space complexity. The two primary categories of randomized algorithms are Las Vegas algorithms, which always produce the correct output, but use randomization to speed up the average case running time and Monte Carlo algorithms that might produce incorrect results within a certain probability scope, but can hone in on a solution over time using randomization, providing approximate solutions to problems. By the late 1960s, randomness would become a fundamental element of communication security as computer-based encryption began to evolve. In the early 1970s, IBM formed a crypto group which designed a method of encrypting data in blocks or a block cipher to protect its customers' data. Called the Data Encryption Standard, or DES, it would be adopted by the US as a national standard. DES is an example of a symmetric key encryption algorithm, which uses the same key for both encryption and decryption processes. Both the sender and the receiver must possess the secret key, making it crucial to keep the key secure and confidential. 
The original 56-bit version of DES would prove to be too weak by the 1990s, and would be replaced by more sophisticated methods, such as the Advanced Encryption Standard or AES and Triple DES. In the 1980s, the need for non-shared keys led to the development of asymmetric key algorithms that use a pair of keys, a public key for encryption, and a private key for decryption. The public key can be freely distributed, allowing anyone to encrypt messages that only the holder of the corresponding private key can decrypt. Asymmetric algorithms such as Revest Shamir Alumin, or RSA, and Elliptic Curve Cryptography, or ECC, would become crucial to the digital signature mechanisms that secure the vast majority of today's internet communications, as well as cryptocurrencies. By nature, encryption loses its strength as more information can be ascertained about the process used to generate its computational precursors. They can be attacked from predicting or exploiting patterns. The less predictable they are, the greater the security. Because of this characteristic, random number generation is vital in cryptography. It provides the unpredictability needed to create secure encryption keys, initialization vectors, and other critical mechanisms. Encryption's reliance on the pureness of its randomness source created a new challenge as there are only three primary practical sources. The environment, a chaos-derived source where slight variations in a starting condition lead to significantly different outcomes over time, and pseudo-random algorithms. Pseudo-random algorithms are the easiest to implement, computationally efficient, and the most common randomness source in computing. They generate sequences of numbers that appear to be random, but are actually determined by an initial value called a seed, and a deterministic computation process. However, if a seed is known, a random sequence of numbers can easily be replicated. They are also periodic and can repeat sequences after enough iterations. To counter this, a relatively unpredictable seed is typically selected, such as the time. However, for encryption purposes, this is far too predictable. For cryptography, hardware random number generators are used that exploit naturally occurring physical environmental phenomena that are inherently unpredictable. The most common form of these devices are electronic noise random number generators that rely on thermal noise or avalanche noise. Thermal noise, also known as Johnson Nyquist noise, is the random movement of electrons in a conductor due to thermal energy. Avalanche noise occurs in semiconductor junctions where voltage is close to the breakdown threshold. Both types of noise provide a source of true randomness that can be amplified and processed to generate random numbers. More advanced hardware random number generators use photonic processes, such as the detection of photon arrival time or quantum properties of light to generate random numbers. Known as quantum random number generators, these devices are the pinnacle of random number generation as they exploit the fundamental randomness of quantum mechanics. Another common method is to use the unpredictable nature of radioactive decay using Geiger-Muller tubes or other radiation detectors to measure the time at which radioactive particles decay. Being technically quantum in nature, the intervals between decay events are inherently random and can be used to generate random numbers. Chaotic physical systems are also used to generate random sequences. Chaotic systems are highly sensitive to initial conditions, making their behavior unpredictable over time. One notable example of this is Cloudflare's use of a wall of lava lamps as a source for random number generation that secures their infrastructure. In concept, hardware random number generators are the purest practical source of randomness available, particularly for encryption. However, their highly specialized construction, or lack of technical access, makes them difficult to audit by the general public leaving them susceptible to flaws or backdoors that purposefully compromise the system's randomness and making breaking encryption far easier than its theoretical difficulty. One example of this is Intel's on-chip electronic noise random number generator instruction known as RDSeed and RDRAND found on many of its CPUs. On June 9, 2020, researchers discovered a vulnerability named Crosstalk that allowed malicious code on one core of the processor 
to read random numbers generated by RD Rand and RD Seed instructions from another core. The team was able to demonstrate that they could extract a complete encryption key after just one signature operation, highlighting the severity of the issue. It's also possible for algorithms to be covertly compromised, or at least compromised by insufficient randomness. Though at present, no widely used encryption algorithm have been known to the public to be fully compromised. Currently, the future of commercial randomness lies in more robust, low-cost embedded quantum random number generators. Simultaneously, encryption algorithms are undergoing constant refinement to withstand the emerging threats posed by these very same properties that permit quantum computing. In effect, pitting the fundamental laws of nature against each other. Human intuition is constantly being challenged by mathematical analysis, and understanding randomness is a perfect example of this. In fact, data science is a direct expansion of this need to comprehend the counterintuitive and apply this understanding to solving real-world problems. Have you ever wanted to build upon your ability to better understand how to interpret the true meaning behind data? Well, there's a free and easy way to get started immediately. That's where Brilliant.org comes in. Brilliant.org is my go-to tool for diving headfirst into learning a new concept. It's a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving. Because to truly learn something, it takes more than just watching it. You have to experience it. Brilliant is constantly developing their courses to offer the most visual, hands-on approach possible to make mastering the key concepts behind today's technology effective and engaging. An eye-opening learning experience I highly recommend is Brilliant's Predicting with Probability course. This intuitive set of data science lessons helps you build the skills needed to analyze and interpret data using interactive exercises to allow you to pull effectual information from uncertainty. With Brilliant, you learn in depth and at your own pace. It's not about memorizing or regurgitating facts. You simply pick a course you're interested in and get started. If you feel stuck or made a mistake, an explanation is always available to help you through the learning process. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days and start learning STEM today, visit brilliant.org forward slash new mind or click on the link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.